All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're back onto the MGB. We're doing some pre work, ready for the supercharger for fitting a 123 Tune Plus. <laughs> switch so that's good um so now what i want to do is find um top to center so we're going to move the pulley around i've got my 33 millimeter socket and a large wrench so let's do this it's in here somewhere oh just passed it let's take it back And that is top of the sensor. Oh. Yeah, we've got a piston right at the top. All right, spot on. So this spark plug looks a bit sooty, so we'll need to have a look at that and check where we are with, see if we're running rich across all four of them. But for now, we'll just put it back in. So the next thing I need to do is get the distributor out and I've got to undo this retaining collar. So let's get that undone and get it out. Get the dipstick out of the way. I'll leave, I'll leave the dipstick here so I don't forget to put it back in. Right, a younger and wiser version of me obviously thought it was a good idea. I stood with an Allen head on this, so I have to do it with an Allen key. It must have been the only thing I could find in the garage at the time. Oh, great. Oh, you guys can't see a great deal. I can't see a great deal down here either. Right. I think we're loose, so let's see if we can get that out. In the past, this has got really stuck in there, and it took me a while to get it out. I had to use pry bars to get it out, but um, it's all been greased up, so hopefully this will move and come out quite easy now. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Right, let's take the vacuum line off. That looks a bit worse for wear, so we're going to need one of those, aren't we? You know the number one's here. Oh. Out, they're all off. Let's put them out of the way. Pull this probably out. Oh, there we are, the lights negative and positive and positive off. Okay, cool. And I just need to clip that cable tie. Cool. So you can see in the past I put some copper grease on it to stop it seizing. Um, this is an Aldon 101, 101 BR2 distributor. So a distributor specifically bought for the... Um, yeah, there it is. 101 BR2 distributor specifically bought for the fast road cam that I've got in the car. So, um, yeah, based on a, a Lucas unit um, and obviously just uh, recurved by Alden. So, vacuum unit. Been on the car for, I don't know, 15 years now. So, it's worked really well. Not had any trouble with it. Had to change the cap and. Motor looks, a, motor looks a bit worn, but I've never had really any, any problems with it. I'll probably do a change out, but um, yeah, that's okay. That'll go in the spares box. Might at some point find its way onto a marketplace or eBay. Right, yeah, so here they are side by side. So we have the old unit and the new unit. And the, and the first thing you'll notice is the, the unit. new unit is a, the quality of, of the product. It's a nice turned body. I think it's based on a Bosch unit. So it's really high quality, got some nice laser etching in there by the look of it. It's really good quality. Feels weighty. The original unit based on Lucas, so cast aluminium. So a little bit rough around the edges, did its job. But this just looks looks a bit smarter. It looks a bit it's smaller, it looks smaller as well. Looks... What I'm gonna do next is just trip the wires, put the put the spades on so we can get this wired in. Right, click this. So we've got three wires, the red one's positive switch, so that goes to the positive side of the coil. Negative switch, so that goes to the negative side of the coil. And the blue one is the ground. Let's cut these the right length, same length. That's about there, isn't it? So, cut that. Nice. Right, here's the two I'm after, so that twist. Ah, nice. Again, good. And they're nice and strong, won't come off, so. Okay, so I need to figure out the ground. We'll do that when it's in the car. 
Right, so if you look at this, you can see some of the bruising when I had to get it out before when it got stuck in there. So yeah, not great. Um, I just had to give it a bit of a file, clean it up. Now that fits, so we can pop it back on. Pop this in. There we are, when she's home. So I put it in, I'm 180 degrees out on the rotor arm. Well, that's incorrect because that only goes in one way. The mark on my pulley suggests I'm at top dead center. So at this point, it's obvious that we're at top dead center on the exhaust stroke and not on the compression stroke. So what I'm going to show you now is how you can see that from looking at the movement of the valves as you rotate the engine. Now, it's obvious here that you can see that from looking at the rotor arm if you've got the distributor in. But if you've not got the distributor in and you're unsure if you're on the compression stroke or the exhaust stroke, you can check by looking at how the how the valves move and open and close as you rotate the engine. So let's do that. Right, so we've got exhaust, inlet, inlet, exhaust. Exhaust, inlet, inlet, exhaust. Right, okay. So we're trying to find top dead center on number one, which is this one. Engine rotates clockwise when running. And we know that the cam rotates one time for every two rotations of the crank. So we get top dead center twice for each firing cycle, um, which is inlet, compression, power, exhaust. So if we rotate this clockwise, um, we should see the inlet valve close. And that's about another 90 degrees or so, we should get to top dead center number one on the compression stroke. Let's try that. So we're watching this valve, the inlet, we need to start on to open and close so it's opening so the inlet's opening have that open so that's open about about 250 odd degrees so let's keep going that's open we'll stay open for a while it's closing now when that comes to the top which is about there we should now rotate another 90 degrees and then get to top dead center on number one on the top of the compression stroke about 45 and i'll go another 45. these valves are still closed which is good because you need them both closed for the compression stroke i can just see it right we're spot on right it's going to be it for the night um Starting to get dark, starting to get cold, so I'll wrap it up, pick this up again in the morning. Right, so we've got ignition on. Um, I'm going to put this body about where we want it, because there's obviously four chances of this firing, so you can put it generally where you want it, within 90 degrees or so. The engine rotates clockwise, the distributor arm rotates anti-clockwise, so we've got to turn the distributor arm, the rotor arm clockwise, take out the slack. Okay, so we've done that. Now we've got to rotate the body clockwise until the LED light comes on. Now this is going to be difficult for you to see, so I'll try. That's just come on. Right, I'm just going to show you that. Okay, so we'll take it back. Rotor arm round to the right, take out the slack, and then the body's going to go round. You should see it come on. You should see it come on. There we are. Right, so that's in the right place, number one. We'll tighten that up, and then we can start putting it all back together. Right, so now we're going to put the cap on and put the, put the um, HD lead back on. So there's a, there's a notch in the, in the cap, there's a notch at the bottom, so that goes at the bottom. Click. Click. Click those two on. It's a nice piece of kit, this, nice and solid. So, yeah, it's good. Happy with that. Firing order on here is anti clockwise, one, three, four, two. So, that's the one I've just pointed in that direction. That's one, three, four, two. Comes underneath. Brilliant. And then we need the one from the coil as well. I'm going to put the black lead back on because that was only needs to be off just for setup. Right, let's put the rocker cover back on. You can see the gasket, it's actually sat around there quite neat. In the past, I've had problems with the gasket falling in, but I, I glued it on last time I did it, so it stayed in place quite well. Right, so we almost forgot the dipstick. Put that back in. And. 
Oh, I forgot to put on the vacuum line, so let's put that back on. <sighs> We're in. Brilliant. Done. Right, so I've got my tablet. Let's turn that on. Let's come on with the ignition. I've already installed 123 Tune Plus. Let's start that. Right, welcome to the Tune Plus app. That will search for your Tune one, so you need to turn the ignition on. So ignition's on. Search. Connected. Awesome. Pin is one, two, three, four. Enter. Pin OK. Authorised. Right, so I've just put in the um, centrifugal curve. I've put a static in of 10 degrees. So this, this car has always needed an advance on it to run well. So I'll run with that for now so we get to. And then I've translated the um, Aldon 101BR2 degrees to RPM into the crankshaft degrees and RPM for in here. So I have to double both both numbers. So, and then I'll get my, my advanced curve. That's nice and straight. So that looks reasonable. And now I need to put in my um, vacuum curve such so as pull. so this is the vacuum curve right but i'm struggling with it at the moment because as soon as i try to edit it yeah that should be okay as a curve but it won't let me click done i've been through it i've been through it a few times but it won't let me select it so i'm gonna have to i think i have to leave the, the vacuum one right so here we go um just gotta put the ignition back onto the connect connected we're in neutral let's see bit of choke We'll see if she'll start. Right, so I'm going to refilm some of the aspects about setting up the the app. Um, I've been around the houses a little bit with this. Initially, I thought that the ignition timing could be set using the, the static advance um, but that doesn't actually do that all that does if you have time to read it is it just resets where the dashboard displays the advance under idle it doesn't actually change the advance curve so you can't set your static advance your ignition advance using that okay so what I did on the basis of that is I changed my my curve, and I'll show you in a second, I changed my centrifugal curve to um, include the ignition timing underneath it. So I just added that on. Right, so adding the ignition timing to the graph, just adding it to the numbers, gave me this curve. So I wanted to put 13 in, um, and then it adds it onto the rest. Now the problem I got is that when you get to the top end up here, I should be at 40 plus 13, which is 53. And um, I get, I can only go to 50, so it maxes out. And when I went on the test drive, set like this, I could feel it holding back at higher, at higher revs. I could feel it, it wasn't as pulling and firing as early as I've had it previously. So I could feel the car being slower. So, but doing it this way meant that I'm, I'm restricted in the flexibility. I couldn't couldn't go any further doing it this way. Mulling it over last night, I think I need to make some flight modifications. So it wasn't advancing enough to mm -hmm. higher RPM. And when you think about it, the Tune Plus only goes to 50 degrees in distributor. And you have to half that to get to crank. So it's only going to 25 degrees advance. Like this car's always ran at quite a high advance. So I'm going to take the advance at 1000 RPM and actually move, rotate the distributor like as, as you would a normal distributor. Put and then put my my curve in, and then actually program my curve in. But knowing that I've got a a uh, mechanically set advance um, when I'm taking over. So let's do that. Right, so she's running um, around 1000 RPM. I want to just put another 13 degrees on. That's the, the maximum against my engine build sheet. And I think I'll go from there. Right, so I've updated that, right? So we will do the static advance on the engine. The curve's going to follow up nicely. 
so I think this will probably work better at higher RPM, so we'll give it a try. Well, she starts well, that's a start, that's good. So now I've turned it off and on again, you have to, the tuning bit's only, um, it's only there temporarily, you can't, you can't tune it and then it automatically adjusts the curve, you have to tune it temporarily and then take that information and put it back onto your curve. So what I'm going to do now is go and put an extra five degrees back onto my curve. So that's it. Um, glad I did that. I think that I need to tune it still more, spend some more time fettling with the curves. But I'm taking all this apart anyway for the supercharger, so it's all going to get done on the rolling road. So what I've done though is by doing the ignition timing by moving the distributor, I've given myself more flexibility. I think by doing it all in the distributor, because it's limited to 50 degrees in the distributor, was really limiting how far advanced you you could go. So that's a, something that I think people should be aware of really if you're going to put fit one of these it might be a mix of doing some of the ignition timing on the distributor in the block itself and then the the, the tuning inside the unit um, using the app I don't, in my case I couldn't just do it all in the app so I needed some more flexibility but uh, it's been a good video thanks for watching um, I hope you're enjoying the content like and subscribe if you want to learn more about the supercharger project then you can watch the first video i'll put a link up now for you to go and look at that um uh yeah until next time my name's craig and i'm exhausted thank you